object is given by this equation here. And they tell us that if u is equal to 3 and t is equal to 5, we have to find the distance that the object has traveled. So in order to answer this question, all we have to do is just plug in the values that they've given us and then solve for d. So if we substitute u to be 3 and t to be 5, you'll get this here. And then simplifying that out will give you 90 meters. And this question here is just worth an achieved. So in the next question, they want us to solve this quadratic equation here. Now, any time that you're solving a quadratic equation, you have to first of all factorize out the equation that they've given you. And in order to do this, you have to find two numbers that will multiply to give you negative 9 and add to give you negative 3. So first, let's start off with finding two numbers that will multiply to give us negative 9. So I came up with the following combinations. And now, since we have a 2 in front of our x squared term, we have to go and multiply each of these combinations by 2. So first of all, if we multiply negative 9 by 2 and leave the 1 as it is, that's going to give us negative 18 and 1. And then in the second case, we can multiply the 1 by 2 and leave the negative 9 as it is. That's going to give us negative 9 and 2. Go ahead and do the same to each of the combinations. And that's just what I've done here. And now we have to find the combination that when added together will give us negative 3. And that is going to be either this combination here or this combination here. However, it doesn't really matter because the two numbers that gave us those combinations were both negative 3 and 3. So we can go ahead and write that in factorized form. And now once you've got that, because this entire expression here has to equal 0, we know that either this bracket here or this bracket here must be equal to 0. Once we know that, we can go ahead and solve for x. So in the first case, I've just worked out x by getting rid of the 3, by subtracting it from 0, and then to leave x by itself, divided negative 3 by 2. And that's going to give you negative 3 over 2. Or in the other case, you've just got x minus 3 equals 0, and so just taking the 3 over to the other side to leave x by itself will just give you x equals 3. Make sure that you write this in the proper form, so writing the plus 3 on this side and the negative 3 on this side, and the way that you can check if you've done that right is to basically just expand out this bracket and see if that gives you the original equation that the question gave us, and if it does, you know that you've put it in the factorized form correctly. And solving that question correctly will give you a merit grade. So in this question here, they tell us that if 6x minus y is equal to 21 and negative x plus 6y is equal to 14, what is the value of x minus y? So I've just rewritten down the first equation here, and I'm going to express this equation in terms of y. In other words, I'm just going to make y the subject of this equation. So all I've done is taken 21 to this side by subtracting it from the left-hand side, and then taken y to the other side by adding it to the other side, because we're just doing the opposites. And that's going to give me 6x minus 21 is equal to y. And now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and substitute this whole entire expression in place of y in our other equation. And that's going to give me this here. Now I can go ahead and expand this bracket out. So I've got negative x plus 36x minus 126 because 6 multiplied by negative 21 is negative 126. And that's going to be all equal to 14. Now we can go ahead and combine the like terms. And now we can take the negative 126 onto the right hand side by adding it to 14. And that's going to give me 35x is equal to 140. And then to solve for x, I just have to go 140 divided by 35 because x on the left hand side is multiplied by 35. And we know that 35 goes into 70 twice and 70 goes into 140 twice. So therefore 35 goes into 140 four times. This means that x is equal to 4. We can go ahead and substitute x equals 4 into our equation to solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you do that, you're going to get that y is equal to 3. The question asks us, what is x minus y? We've worked out that x is equal to 4 and that y is equal to 3. Therefore, 4 minus 3 is just equal to 1. 
And if you work out that the answer is one, you can go ahead and award yourself with an excellent grade. Danny is trying to find a value for C so that this expression here only has one solution for X. Find the value for C and the solution to the equation. Now, this equation here looks a lot like an equation for a parabola. And if there's only one solution for X, that means that the entire parabola only touches the X axis at one point. In other words, the only point that it touches with is at its vertex. So therefore, we have to try find one number that will multiply to give us positive C and will add to give us plus 6. And if there is only one solution, it must also be a square number. And if you think about it carefully, the only number that can make both of these requirements true is 3. Because 3 times 3 is 9, which is a square number, and 3 plus 3 is 6. Now that we've got our equation, we can go ahead and solve for what x might be. Since the whole expression is equal to zero, either this bracket here or this bracket here has to be equal to zero. And since both of the brackets are the same, we can just solve it once through. In order to get x by itself, we must minus three from zero. This means that x must equal negative three. And if you manage to correctly solve for that, you can go ahead and award yourself with an excellence grade. So here, h is equal to 9 minus 4x squared, and they want us to give the equation for x in terms of h. So all this means is to just rearrange the equation to make x the subject of the equation. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the 9 on the right-hand side by subtracting it from h. And then we can get rid of the negative 4 on the right-hand side, so we can leave x squared by itself. So just go h minus 9 divided by negative 4 because it's the opposite of multiply. And then, of course, since we've got x squared on this side, to get x by itself, we have to take the square root of the left-hand side. Now, we never really want to have negatives in our denominator, so let's just rearrange this equation a little bit to get the negative on the numerator instead of the denominator. And then remember that whenever we have the answer equal to the square root of a number, we can always have positive or negative values as possible solutions. So therefore, we've got to put a plus or minus sign at the front of our expression. That is worth and achieved. Here they want us to simplify this expression. Anytime that we have quadratics that we need to simplify, the first thing we want to do is factorize them. So let's go ahead and factorize the numerator. And in order to do that, we just have to find two numbers that will multiply to give us positive 4, and the same two numbers should add to give us negative 5. And if you think about that, the only possible numbers is going to be negative 4 and negative 1. And then, looking at the denominator, we can see that 5x is a common factor in both of these terms. So let's go ahead and extract that. We can go ahead and cancel out common terms from both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, it's going to be x minus 4. And if you do that, you're going to be left with x minus 1 over 5x. An L-shaped model is to be made from the following sketch. What is the perimeter of the model in terms of x? So to calculate the perimeter, we have to add together all of the lengths of this model. And as you can see, there are some lengths that are unknown, but I've calculated them from the values that we do know. So for example, for this purple shade here, we don't know how long that length is, but we do know this length here, and we also know this length here. And if we subtract one from the other, we're going to get the unknown length. And then if you go ahead and add together all of the lengths of this model, you will get the following expression. And then you just have to go ahead and combine all of the like terms. Correctly doing that will give you 32x plus 2 and that is an excellent civil answer. The next question tells us that the area of the model is 92 centimeters squared and they want us to work out what the value of x is. So here I've just redrawn the picture that they gave us in the previous question and I've divided the entire section into two parts because since we're looking at area 
it's going to be easier if we divide the entire model into two rectangles and then add the areas of each of them together to calculate the total area. So the area of a rectangle is given by length times width, which means that if we had to calculate the area of this orange section, we just have to go 12x plus 1 multiplied by 2. And expanding that bracket out will give you 24x plus 2. And the area of the remaining rectangle is just this length here multiplied by this length here. And if you expand those two brackets out, you'll get 8x squared minus 8x minus 6. And you get that from simply multiplying each of the numbers in each of the brackets by each other. And then you just have to go ahead and combine those two areas to get the total area. And then if you combine those, you'll get the following expression. And then you just have to go ahead and combine the like terms. So simplifying that gives you 8x squared plus 32x minus 96. And since 8 is a common factor in each of these numbers, we can go ahead and cancel that out. And then we just need to find two numbers that will multiply to give us negative 12 and add to give us positive 4. And those two numbers are 6 and negative 2, since 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, and 6 plus negative 2 is positive 4. And then since this entire expression is equal to 0, this means that either this bracket here or this bracket here has to individually be equal to 0. This means that x is either equal to negative 6 or x is equal to 2. Now since we are looking at the area of a shape, there is no way that x can be equal to negative 6 because you can't have a negative length and you can't have a negative area. This means that we can disregard x equals negative 6 as being a possible solution for the value of x in this particular context because in reality it is not possible to have a negative length. This means that x has to be equal to 2 centimeters. And correctly solving for that will give you an excellence grade.